Ma'am rightly mentioned, soft skills are creativity. You become creative. You learn adaptability. You collaborate. You take decisions, like how Kavya took decisions, like who is going to do what. Okay, and then your emotional quotient in deciding what needs to be done when also is enhanced. You learn problem solving, and when you're talking to each other, what happens? Your communication skills improve. Okay, so you become creative. You learn to work in cooperation. So you learn to communicate, to learn to accept others' opinion. I want you all to make a note of these three points quickly. So this is how it impacts when you work in a team. Just make a note, creative, communicate, adaptability. That's enough. Okay. I will be sharing this as a PDF document for you. Let us proceed. Now, what is collaboration? So now all this while we spoke about teamwork how we work with each other together on a common goal. It's all fine. What is collaboration? There's a subtle difference in collaboration. Okay, let's look at what it is. See, collaboration is a process involved where two or more individuals with different perspectives, okay, or different expertise all perspectives come together to work on a common goal. So I'll explain what this exactly means through an example. Okay, then we'll again come back to the definition. Okay. Say, suppose we are going to construct a school. Okay, a new school has to be constructed. Who are all the people that will be involved in construction? Can anybody answer me? Take a wild guess. What all people from different expertise do you require to construct a building or a construct a school? Anyone? Laborers. Laborers. Okay. Yes, Kavya, I'll come to you. Okay. Then? Um, an architect. Architect. Okay. Yes, Adisha? Painters. Painters. Yes. Yes, Arzen? Civil engineers nation. Yes, civil engineers. So we need labor, we need engineers, we need architects, we need laborers, we need painters. Anything else? Yes, Adishri? Carpenters. Carpenters, yes. What else? So we have five people. Okay, on the whole, let's take. We have civil engineers, we have architects, we have laborers. We have painters, we have carpenters. Okay. Now, civil engineers, is only one civil engineer going to work on this project? No, ma'am. No, they should ma work as Yeah, we need multiple civil engineers because civil engineers have to do uh, 3D modeling. They have to do uh, drawings. Can one person do? No, right? It's a very big project. Okay, so what happens? You have a bunch of engineers who sit together, who work as a team, and their goal is to produce drawings. Okay, without drawings, can they construct the building? No, no. So what happens? Civil engineers work in a team on a common goal, which is to make drawings. So that's one team. That is team number one. Okay, now we have team two. What is team two for me? Architects. Yeah. So architects will tell me about how to beautify the building. For example, all these colors, paintings, the shapes of the windows. So all the architects, that is team two for me. They work together to give me colors of paintings, for example. Okay. What is team three for me, Smarties? Anyone? Engineers are done. Architects are done. What is team three? Painters. Painters. So can one painter paint the entire building? No, no ma'am. No, right? So we have a bunch of painters who work as a team to paint the entire building. So that is team three. Okay. Now what is team four? 
laborers laborers so laborers are going to construct the building again forming a team so their end goal is to construct so that's team 4 and team 5 we have carpenters Carpenter. okay a bunch of carpenters are going to work as a team to provide all the necessary seating arrangements for all the students so how many teams do we have five five teams okay five different teams okay so five different teams of different expertise okay now a civil engineer is not going to be an architect an architect is an architect a laborer is a laborer a painter is a painter a carpenter is a carpenter so they are all of different expertise what are they different expertise different expertise, expertise. so all these five different teams of different expertise come together collaboratively okay they are going to collaborate understanding smarties are you getting my point yes ma'am yes so okay. different they are all different different people from different backgrounds they collaborate together all the five teams but again they are working on the common goal what's the common goal adisha they are all just working on a plan to make a new school yes the objective or the project is to finish the building but all these five teams are going to work in their own fields but collaboratively they'll work to bring out the school yes give me a thumbs up if you have understood what is collaboration let me give you another example share every global foundation is an organization okay started by whom ram babu sir can ram babu sir alone do everything no no right no right so as an organization now we have rohit who works on posters you get posters right every day yeah do you get posters about your sessions so who is working rohit is working now we have veronica who is conducting the session right she is hosting the session for us zoom session so veronica's work is to host the session rohit's work is to create what posters Post. yes and we have lot of teachers or trainers like sujata ma'am like myself so we are all teaching you okay but what is the end result we want the share every to grow so share every global foundation a lot of speakers from all across the world with their expertise they come collaboratively work with the organization to make it a grand success so that's collaboration for you so collaboration is what it's a process where two or more individuals for example we had laborers we had engineers we had architects or different different expertise right can you expect a laborer to become an architect no okay they are all different they are coming from different expertise they are unique in their own way okay so they come with their different expertise and perspectives they collaboratively work as a team to work on a common goal which is a school building got the difference now let's do the activity activity number 2 for you is say you have an amazing story with you okay this is something that you will like you have to direct a movie you have an amazing story with you all okay and you want to direct a movie you want to make a movie out of that story okay now you have to think about different teams who will be involved in making a movie whatever comes to your mind if you have one team two team you all watch movies right yes yes so make a note of all the teams that you can think think of to direct a movie make a note of it so in a movie what all do you see that is a clue for you if you imagine what all things happen in a movie then you can think of different teams working towards making a movie you will have songs in your movies you will have actors you will have actresses yeah you have somebody who directs it 
Think of all the different teams. Then Smarties. Yes, Kavya. How many teams do you have? I have five teams. Okay, can you tell me what are the different teams? Five teams? Actors slash actresses, stylists, directors, people who do voiceovers and singers. Okay, so they are all different teams. They work. How are they going to work? What's the word? Collaboration. Yes. So they are coming from different expertise? Yes? Yes. Okay, let's hear from Prajay. Prajay, how many teams do you have? One team. Or what is that one team is going to do? Dancing. Dancing. Okay, you have a dance team. Yes? Can yes, a movie be successful without dance? No, right? We need a dancing choreographers. Okay, they're called choreographers. Yes, Adisha. I have five teams. Directors, actors, slash actresses, singers, dancers, and photographers. Yes, photographers. So they are all coming from different expertise. They work as different teams, but they collaborate together to give you the end result, which is what? What is the end goal? To direct a movie. To be movie. Okay. So I want all the students to look at my screen now. Now let's quickly take a look. So you have a movie director. Is he alone? No, right? He has a team. Yes. That yes. team works for you. Okay. So movie director, they collaborate and work as team one. Then we have movie producer. So he's going to give all the money to produce the movie. So he's not alone. Again, he has a set of team members, producers. Okay. So they work as team two. And yes, we have our actors and actresses. And we have a villain. Yeah. They all are going to work as team three. Yes, students. Okay. And then we have music producers and singers. Yeah. So we have four teams. And we can also have stylists. We can have photographers as team five. So they all do what? They work on a common goal by collaborating. So now you understood what is the difference between a team and a collaboration? Yes, ma'am. It's a subtle difference. Collaboration is also a teamwork. But people from different expertise come together and work as a team. Okay? That's the subtle difference. Okay. So collaboration is people from different expertise come together to solve or create something new. And teamwork focuses on collective effort and shared responsibilities. Okay. So they're sharing the responsibilities. Like how you did in your science project. You shared your responsibilities, right? Yes. So, Kavya had three members in her team. So, what she did? She shared. She divided the responsibilities. So, that's teamwork and collaboration for you. I want to make an announcement. First of all, uh, we have come to the end of the session. Now, from next class onwards, we will be starting at sharp 8 o'clock. Okay? So, I request all students to be on time. Today, I'll be taking 10 minutes extra. Because we started a little late, considering today is the first class. From next class onwards, dot 8 we begin and dot 9 we close. Okay, that's my first thing. Now, second um, instruction for you is, every class, every practical class, I want one student to volunteer to speak for 5 minutes, 3 to 5 minutes on any topic that you like. Okay. It can be your science, animals, plants, humans, okay? Any uh, world leaders, biographies, autobiographies, choice is yours. But you have to speak for, yes, Adishri? Is it homework? Yeah, no, no, no. This is not homework. Every week, I want one person to speak on a topic. Okay, for today, we have Kavya. Okay, so the ideology is, you will get an opportunity to speak. Okay, that is point number one. And point number two is, we all will learn something new. So imagine every person speaking on different, different topics. Don't you think we are going to learn something new every week? Informative? Yes? Okay. Yes, and at the same time, if today Kavya is going to speak, I want Tarun to make questions. 
okay of whatever she has listened and you have to ask questions to your members and see how well they listened okay can we do that so today i'll make a note so starting from today we have kavya and tarun so tarun has to make a note of five questions that's it yes ma'am okay now whoever answers okay the maximum questions they get points and at the end of 6 months i will be giving them a gift which i could not in the previous session because we did not meet so this time we are going to meet okay so they'll be called as the best listener excited so yes. now i hand over the stage to kavya and tarun you have to make five questions kavya over to you thank you ma'am greetings to everyone my name is kavya dabley and i'm a smarty from zambia today my speech is about something that is taught in school colleges and universities it tells and teaches us about the past and previous communities and civilizations yes we are talking about history history has many interesting topics and i cannot possibly tell you all about them in under four, in under 5 minutes so today we are going to be diving into a specific topic in history this was the time when the world actually started taking shape and give a base to what it is today Many people ventured into new lands they had never heard of. Can any of you guess what it is? Please raise your hands if so. Okay. We are talking about the age of discovery and exploration. Let's begin. About 600 years ago, Europeans began to find out more about the world. This period of time was called the era was called the age of discovery and exploration. It began in the 1400s and continued to the 1600 CE. During this time there were many new discoveries about science, medicine, art and culture. Many of these things were made and explored from outside of Europe. European explorers simply brought these ideas home when they returned back to Europe. This was the time when Europeans discovered new routes to India, the Far East and the Americas. For hundreds of years before the 1400s and the 1500s, the center of the trading world was the Middle East, Baghdad to be precise. Who traded there and what did they bring? Good question. Merchants from India and the Far East traveled to cities in the Middle East to sell silk, spices, carpets, and precious jewels to European to European traders. European traders also bought goods from Europe such as woolen cloth, iron, timber, and salt. a golden age in the middle east the middle east was far ahead in science medicine engineering mathematics and astronomy than many european countries some examples are the astronomer al fazari he invented an instrument called the astrolabe which made it possible to work out direction and location when traveling a woman called ibn sina wrote a medical textbook called the canon it was used for hundreds of years to train doctors around the world Omar Khayyam was an Arab mathematician, astronomer, geographer and poet. He wrote the rules for algebra that influenced mathematicians around the world for many years. The word algebra comes from the Arabic word al-jawr, which means reunion of broken parts. The Ottoman Empire in the early 1300s, several powerful tribes began to conquer the Middle East. One tribe, the Ottomans from northeast Turkey, began building an empire. Over the next 200 years the empire grew until it stretched from the Euphrates river near the Arabian Gulf to the Danube river in Hungary the empire took control of many key trading cities in the Arabian Gulf and put taxes for anything that was imported or exported because ottomans were taking over scholars started founding schools in Italy in cities such as Florence and Padua it's exploration time as the ottoman empire took control of everything in the middle east north africa and southeast europe they also put taxes on everything that was imported or exported portugal was one of the leading countries and their prince prince henry encouraged sailors to find new sea routes in 1488 ce he founded a school of navigation science and map making in the same year a portuguese explorer by the name of bartolomeu dias was the first european to sail around the southern tip of africa and into the indian ocean explorer vasco da gama became the first european to sail around africa and land in india 
Christopher Columbus set out west across the Atlantic and planned to reach India and China by sailing west from Europe across the Atlantic Sea. Since he didn't have enough funds to fund his trip, Queen Isabella of Spain agreed to do it. He set off with 100 sailors on August 3rd, 1492 CE. He landed at last on October 12, 1492 CE. And they landed on the on an island in the Caribbean Ocean called San Salvador. He also went to islands such as Cuba and Hispaniola until his death. Until his death, he believed that he found out routes to islands near India and China, and he named these the Indies. And they are actually known as the West Indies now. They are also under his name. But he had no idea he actually landed on the continents of North and South America, which the Europeans did not know existed at that time. People didn't realize Columbus found these until after he had died and explorers found new lands for the Americas. Thank you all for listening to my speech and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you to all our coaches. This is me signing off. Oh my God, I think you have covered an entire portion of history, which is very, very important. The invasion of um, the first European and also the age of discovery and exploration. So that is how they discovered the country, which is known for its cultural heritage, India. Thank you so much, Kavya. That was wonderful. So I think from next class, what we will do is we will have two to three minutes, okay, so, so that we have a little time to concentrate and we can finish off the session much ahead of time. So thank you, Kavya. That was wonderful. Yes, I hope now Tarun is ready with his questions. We'll have only five questions. Okay. Quickly. Question number one. Ma'am, can I select a person for the question? No. That way, I think uh, that will not be correct. We'll see who is going to raise their hand first. I will be anyways noting here. Okay. okay. We'll see how this goes today's first class okay the first question is what subject does she talk about Cradle. yes history okay thank you project next question the second question is who are moved to find about the world you know can i tell yes project Europeans. Yes. Okay, the next question. The third question is What are the things does the Europeans started trading? Raise your hands. Can I tell? Yes, Project. Spices. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, there is so many things. Okay, one of them. Okay. Yeah, we had Adi Shri as well. Salt. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the third question, fourth question? Who is the first, first person to sell the things to Africa? Yes, Arvind. Vasco da Gama, I think. Yes? Yes. So we have one more question to go. Yes. And the final question is who yeah. find the seed to India? Can I tell ma'am? Yes, Prajay. Columbus. You have to validate, Tarun. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So for today's session, it's Prajay who is getting maximum points. Okay, thank you, Prajay. Wonderful listening. Okay, so thank you so much. From next class, we will try to see who have the session for five minutes. We'll close it under five minutes. Every week, Shriti ma'am and I, both of us are going to handle you all. We will give you month-wise categorization. What are the topics? How are we going to go about with it? If you miss, connect is lost. Because every session is connected to each other. You, If you feel that, you know, you miss one session and you get back to the next one, there is something very important you lose out in between. So give your best these six months. Try to be full with your attendance. Maintain a notebook, both for the theory and for the practical. 
jot down the important points as they are being discussed. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family if you feel it is something very new and worthy. From my side, definitely, it's a worthy expression. So I'm going to look forward to your enjoyment every moment in that 60-minute session. Look forward to that. Later, you will feel that is a very, very helpful book. It becomes a journal for your, for your learning. Okay? So I'll see you all on Monday, sharp at 8 p.m. or 7.55 p.m. Do log in. Enjoy every moment of the session. And let it be a roller coaster ride of English language learning. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Sudhata, ma'am. I think I also stand on the same grounds of whatever points that she rightly said. It's not like you attend theory and you think that, okay, practicals I will not attend. Or it's not the other way around. You attend only practicals and you miss out on theory. In case if you miss, uh, Rambabu sir has already said that he will be uploading videos. But that doesn't mean you miss classes on a regular basis. So that is what I really want to emphasis on. And apart from that, uh, what I understand from all the students is all of you are aspiring to become flawless and confident speakers. And that can happen only if you repeatedly do what you are asked to do, right? Excellence, then it becomes a habit. So you have to repeatedly uh, take care of your notes, your revisions, the classes, your activities, and then nothing can stop you. Thank you. Thank you.